these prices look pretty good. <coughs> what? How are they so <coughs> So it's vastly approaching Christmas time, and around this time, it's usually a good time to buy a PC and get into PC gaming. Or of course, if you are flipping PCs, it's always a lot easier to flip a gaming PC around Christmas time. But what are the best used PC parts to buy right now? And when I jumped on AliExpress, and I recently did this Ryzen 5 1400 build, where we used an RX 470. If you haven't seen that build, I'll put the link up here. That was just really good value for money. And even though we didn't use a case, we just got such good uh, price performance and coupled with the fact that you could just ship that anytime it was readily available. And then I started checking more of the prices and I realized uh, we need to update sort of on what is the best used parts to buy right now because CPUs have come down since the Zen 2 launch, CPU prices are like ridiculously good. And the funny thing is, is you don't need a um, eight core processor to play a lot of games, especially with a mid-range GPU. So it got me thinking that a lot of the CPUs out there, there are some really good budget picks that I would recommend, even if you wanted to go out and buy a brand new 1660 Super, for example. But we will do another video on what the best new parts to buy are right now leading up to Christmas 2019. But let's start off with some graphics cards and also CPUs. And then we'll talk about local used markets as well, things that I'm looking and keeping an eye on for personally. But another thing is too, you probably have seen me in the last few months, I've been picking up a lot of deals and I haven't been building enough PC. So I've got a lot of stuff just pretty much stacking up here at the moment. And that's one thing I'm not following is that I'm not following my own discipline code where I like to have high turnover so you're not sitting on parts for a while where markets can change. And I feel like in the last few months, markets have definitely changed, especially since the release of Zen 2. And now the release of the 1660 Super, which is really crushing down the GPU market in terms of what you can get used. And of course, when cards like that come out for $229 and they offer really good price performance, that then trickles down to the used market so I've got a little bit of a problem here where I've got to stop hunting parts so much, use deals, but you know you guys love it and I gotta start flipping more PCs, but at the same time, I gotta stick to my own code. I don't know where we went just then, but what I'm trying to say is prices are good. Let's take a look at what the good deals are at the moment. Welcome back to Check Yes City. And when I was on AliExpress, I really just sort of took a moment to step back and say that, for instance, the RX 470s, they were going for $80 ship worldwide. Now, the funny thing is about a lot of these cards is, is that you can flash them for an RX 570 if you wish to, but I've found that out of the box, the RX 470 offers some really good gaming performance numbers at 1080p, and it still does so without juicing too much power. I found that the RX 570s and also the 580s over the 400 series did give you a little bit more performance, but they juiced a lot more power. Uh, even though they're a little bit more expensive, I do recommend the 400 series, especially when you're buying used, because they did use less power. And so over time, that meant that these cards, in my opinion, were less strained, and also you don't need as good a power supply to power these GPUs. And so at $80, the RX 474 gigabyte is easily my number one pick for used gaming graphics cards at the moment. It's hard for other cards, especially on AliExpress itself and on eBay, to beat this price performance. Uh, when we look at the Nvidia side of things, we've got a GTX 960 going for $75. Now, I would buy an RX 470 any day of the week over a GTX 960. The performance differences are quite large. And in fact, a 1063 gigabyte is gonna give you similar performance to the 570 and 470, but the problem is, that costs a lot more on the used market. So when it comes to Team Green and getting a used graphics card, you can expect to pay a little bit more in terms of comparing raw FPS between Radeon and GeForce. And that's one thing we're gonna sort of loop back on when I do do my recommendations in cards. I remember a couple of years ago, I was recommending the 1060 over the RX 580 in a head-to-head -head comparison. I know other YouTubers were saying different, but one of those factors was because I found it easier to sell PCs with NVIDIA cards in them. 
And so that's what my recommendation was based on the fact that there was similar FPS, depended on the title, but your resale value was better with the Nvidia card. And that's also another big reason why I picked the uh, 2060 Super over the 5700 XT. Though if you can't afford the RX 470, which I seriously do recommend you just step it up to that price bracket. But if you can't afford it, there is the R7 260 and also the GTX 750 Ti, which uh, do come in a lot cheaper, but they will offer significantly less uh, gaming performance than the RX 470, and even in terms of value for money too. So that's what the budget line of GPUs holds. If you wanna step things up, then I seriously recommend you just probably stick to that $80 card and then when you're ready, step it up to something like a brand new 1660 Super. But what about searching locally for deals? Here's where I'm looking actually personally myself, and I do recommend you check this out, is looking for a used uh, 1660, 1660 Ti, because I found a lot of the times these cards are going for very cheap because people have bought them thinking that the numbering system, and don't laugh, this is legit, they think that the number's higher than a 1080 Ti, so it will perform better, and then they buy the card only to find out that it doesn't and then they go out and buy an RTX card, like a 2080 or something like that, and they sell off their 1660 Ti's for cheap. So that is one thing to look out for if you're on the used market at the moment, a personal tip for you guys, especially coming into Christmas. Uh, but other 10 series cards, I'm always on the lookout for those GTX 1050 Ti's, 1070's and 1060's. Of course, you wanna be paying a lot lower than the AliExpress prices, because I feel like they're pretty outlandish at the moment for used NVIDIA graphics cards, which is why we're going with that staple RX 470. And uh, looking at the old GTX 7 series, for example, a lot of people have been telling me to get these cards and test them out. I personally have been shying away from them due mainly to two factors. And that is of course the age, they are getting a little bit old now, but also the power consumption of these cards they were quite high. For instance, if you went out and got a GTX 780, even though you could get it for good face value, you would have to make sure that you're coupling it with quite a good power supply. I'd be using around personally a 600 watt power supply with that GTX 780, for example, and that's gonna set you back quite a bit of money where the performance of an RX 470, for example, we can couple that with even the likes of a VS350, use less power and get quite good gaming performance. So basically in a nutshell at the moment, it all spans around this RX 470 being quite a cheap price at the moment. That's the benchmark also for used hustling locally. But if you are looking for a local deal, I am personally looking out for nine series cards, 10 series cards, and even 16 series cards when they come up. And I'll put some price indications for you guys in terms of what I'm personally prepared to pay at the moment in the current market. In terms of RX 500 series cards and 400 series cards locally, they're actually getting to the stage where their prices are worse than that of AliExpress. And I've also got a massive stack of 400 and 500 series cards here at the moment that I've got to flip in gaming PCs, which as we said before, I haven't quite got onto it yet. But let's move over now to use CPUs, which is important to talk about because I've found the prices have come down to very good levels on CPUs as it stands. Let's take for instance, if you're just getting into PC gaming, and you've got a cheap motherboard, or you wanna get a cheap H61 motherboard, then the 1230 Xeon is going for 35 bucks. This is the Sandy Bridge equivalent of the i7-2600, which we recently built a Chapter 2 Fortnite gaming PC around, and the numbers were really smooth once we toggled and played around with the settings, getting practically 150 FPS, which would go very nicely with the RX 470, as we mentioned before. Now. Also on that note, there is the Ryzen 5 1400, which was going for $60, and that comes with a box cooler included. So the 1230 Xeon, you're gonna have to spend an extra $7 or so if you don't have a cooler already, but the motherboard and the RAM will be cheaper on the Xeon side of things, as opposed to the uh, Ryzen system where we used this budget A320 system. It was an Earthshaker motherboard that had a few problems, but it did work in the end, and also the DDR4 memory was a little bit more expensive. But some other CPUs to look out for, of course, is the 1230 V2. This can go for $53. It's a slight improvement over the 1230, especially in terms of power consumption, where it did a bit better, but you get some higher clock speeds and some uh, slight IPC improvements over the previous gen Sandy Bridge Xeon equivalent. And it's only $18 more, and it does a great job for gaming, especially at 1080p with a mid-range graphics card. Now, of course, there is the 1230 V3 as well, but I feel like the Ryzen 5 1400 offers all the same feature set that this CPU offers, 
and it does so with being newer and also having a better upgrade path. So in terms of my three hottest CPUs right now, it would definitely be the 1230, 1230 V2, and also the Ryzen 5 1400. But some other CPUs to look out for as well is the 2689 if you want some more cores, more threads, and especially if you're video editing on a budget. And of course, if you're on a strict budget, then who could forget the overclockable X3470 and the Snowman Cooler Combo. If you can get these with a decent H55 motherboard, then you'll be having a really good gaming experience on a budget. But again, that 1230 Xeon, that does come in with a little bit heavier weight since Sandy Bridge did have a big performance boost over that of Nalum, which is what the X3470 Xeon is based around. And when it all comes down to it, I'll leave some links in the description below for some of these parts that I do recommend coming into Christmas if you're on a budget, as well as some motherboards and RAM combos. But honestly, if you're looking locally for deals on RAM SSDs and stuff like that, you may be in for a bit of a headache because personally, I've had a hard time finding deals on hard drives as well as good prices on SSDs and RAM to the point where I actually buy that stuff off AliExpress since the prices of RAM and all that other goodness is actually coming down to very competitive levels and people who bought it initially two or three years ago and are reselling it now generally don't want to let their stuff go for under half the price that they paid for it but the problem is the new stuff is pretty much at half the price compared to what they originally paid for it a few years ago. So it's kind of hard for me to recommend and go out and uh, look for RAM, SSDs and hard drives at the moment because it's sort of like getting more rare and it's getting a bit of a headache when the new prices are actually a lot better of a deal in my opinion. But of course, the last thing to talk about when it comes to used price performance is these budget OEM systems. Some of my favorites include the Lenovo as well as the Acer, fourth gen options. They can come in with really good price performance, especially since you get the motherboard, CPU cooler, RAM, and sometimes you get an SSD or a hard drive, and then you can take that motherboard out and usually just buy a cheap adapter off eBay, and you also get an IO shield, put it in a new case, whack in something like an RX 470 and another power supply, and you've now got a complete gaming system where I also have done this quite a few times here on the channel in the last few months, I'll leave a link to the Acer Veriton, which we recently did a video on, and that worked 100% with no error messages upon boot. So that was a really good option. I will leave some links in the description below for you guys if you wanna know what used PC parts to look out for at the moment, both in terms of going on AliExpress, but also in terms of deal hunting locally and what you should pay for them. And now it's time for the question of the day, which comes from Filson. And he asks, could you do a small form factor build for us? And it's quite funny that you asked that because we have something in the works should be dropping tomorrow. And it's sort of like actually a budget option for a small form factor build, which I'm in the middle of doing testing right now. And it does give out some decent performance at 1080p. So do stay tuned for that one. Make sure if you're not subbed already to hit that sub button, ring the bell and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. But also let us know in the comment section below what's your favorite used PC parts that you're looking out for at the moment and why. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.